I just stick Yamato Pantan, which gives all your Pantan target attack. And then I just pray that my opponent summon something that is big for my whole field to k himself. Yeah, yeah, I always did that with my Pantans, yeah. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Refresh step where you recover yourself for the main step. I'm Eros for today, tomorrow, and the foreseeable future, Theodore Lu. And I'm with the Spettler in the UK and admin of the Pulse Pairs English Wiki, <coughs> Ayu Museiki. Hello. Yeah, Ayu. I am very happy right now. I thought I would not be able to see you because like last time you said that you would not be available. <laughs> so yeah. Are you trying to curse me to death or something? Nah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, thought, I thought you might be in a plane crash. <laughs> no. probably, probably stranded on an island, Pacific Ocean or something. No, I was like accusing you of like finding another another person to be with on your weekends. <laughs> Bruh. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what's happening. So, but yeah, I think like, we need to clear, uh, not really clarify or clear up, but it's like basically last week has been pretty rough if you are playing Well Spirit Saga because they mm. finally clarified something, uh, <laughs> and it was not pretty. And then we, it was like the day where I think most, uh, some of us or just me are like going on a personal, like a metaphorical journey to kind of like find like why are we like why are we angry why are we doing this why do we care so much about some stuff and then yeah because it's all about okay <laughs> My goodness. You're, so, you're so you're so loud that your micro microphone crashed <laughs> yeah, uh, for a second there, uh, my OPS actually stopped, so I was like, <laughs> my, my, <laughs> <laughs> my, <God>. what <laughs> my goodness, but yeah, uh, so, yeah, I think why it, it probably overloaded my microphone, or my PC is just dying, because <laughs> it has been five years, and I haven't, uh, yeah, I think I haven't changed the thermal pace, so it might do something to it, but yeah, uh, I mean, it, this kind of like uh i mean like the main mattress basically uh if you remember like around the time where they where we were like in la for the world championship it's basically like the morning after it's either morning of the tournament or morning after the tournament i kind of forget ayumu will probably correct me after this but yeah basically they announced like the their plan for a uh, year two in which uh, the Grand Open will be changed to Grand Tour, which will have a pri uh, price of travel vouchers to go to the Pro Tour that is now named ProFest. That will have mm -hmm. both travel voucher and cash prices. Uh, and then travel voucher is for the worlds, of course. But yeah, and then like they mentioned that there will be cash pricing. And then last week, uh, they were making a clarification post that in all levels, so from grand the Grand Tour, up until the world championship there will be zero uh cash pricing and mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> they didn't do like uh, they didn't uh mention like is there anything uh that will be used to kind of like compensate this other than the other than the travel voucher and then like yeah the travel voucher we already i think we already talked about it like we like the travel voucher as a concept but we don't really particularly like the how they are distributing the travel voucher especially in the grand tour level the profess it kind of made sense uh what personally for me doesn't really made sense is they have like the same price pool for the grand tour and the profess so basically the pro tour uh, in the grand in the grand tour you share the sixteen thousand travel voucher budget with the top four with the other people in the top four so you get the invite at top 32 like uh previously but you only get the travel voucher if you're in the top four 
if you are in the profess then the invite to the worlds are only given to the top eight players which arguably made the tournament much more like how to say it? how do they say it? it it increases the prestige of getting into the world tournament right it's a little bit sad that like unlike uh, last year where you get the invite if you are in the top 64 it increases the prestige but it kind of like yeah i mean like if you are still on the way to becoming strong it's going to be much harder for you to kind of like go to the world championship and then like meet lots of people uh, if you are if they wanted to make it more casual it kind of like it kind of like reduces your chance to kind of meet people uh as like going there as a spectator and going there as a competitor is always it will always feel different but it also kind of made sense that uh the pri- the travel vouchers then distributed within the top eight which the which are the only people who will be going to the world championship which raises more que- raises more question like why can't we just do this for both the grand tour and the profess then right so yeah that was my uh that was my piece what do you think about this whole thing are you i don't want to think about it anymore <laughs> uh, let's let's think of happier things i think like yeah i think we have kind of move on i mean like it is uh it is yeah i mean like the sad thing is not that Uh, the money is gone <laughs> but that uh, this whole thing uh, kind of like damages our trust with Bandai since they kind of like backpedal something that is like actually pretty important can be pretty important as but I think like lots of people are like questioning like why are you guys playing for the money I mean like it's not like we are playing for the money to make ourselves richer I mean like all I think like especially for us uh, in the first year the money is kind of like an extension that l- allows us to kind of travel more because like now okay so now if i don't go uh, to the pro tour then i can kind of save uh, save this money for probably going to the next grand open but now uh, with the travel voucher You kind of have to go to the pro tour where uh, you won the grand, uh, the pro fest where you won the grand tour in. But that is, uh, it doesn't really matter since we know that uh, that doesn't exist anyway. But now the pro fest uh, was supposed to have cash pricing that will probably be able to alleviate, to help you to pay with, for more stuff. Since now the travel voucher will probably be used mostly to pay like hotels and uh transportation so then this price money may uh, can get you can help you to probably elevate the food cost or probably to build your tech for the next to the for the worlds lots of things that is like related to the in-game stuff so it's like yeah do we <laughs> like if if the mo- if the money was not offered in the first place it would not be a problem If something else is offered in st- in lieu of the money, that might be a good, how to say, a good compromise. But yeah. But anyway, yeah, like at, <laughs> at the end, like we, we a lot. I, I believe like a lot of people also like only mm-hmm. wanted the cash prize, not mm-hmm. be, like not because they can get more money, but because it's a self-sustained game, mm-hmm. so you don't don't have to put in more to just play the game. Mm. It's like, it's I'm not sure about the Americans, but I think that's certainly the case for a lot of the Europeans because, mm. uh, as I probably mentioned before, but like a lot of them do play the game because mm. they like the gameplay. Mm. So the cash money is really there to to make sure that we can continue playing the game because we have the well funding to do so Mm-mm. so ironic how like you know normally a company will hype you up Mm-mm. like gradually with every post like there's this new things coming yeah, yeah. that's go- it's coming soon yeah it's here today yeah you know Mm-mm. and then on the other hand you got saga which is like 
every post just make you more and more depressed. And mm. eventually, when the big thing drops, you don't even feel anything anymore. I know, right? It feels like you are already so angry that you can't be angry anymore. Literally, yeah. Like like that yeah. day when they announced like there's quote quote unquote something wrong Mm-mm. with their advertisement. Mm-mm. And then I was like, oh, so it finally happened. Yeah. Oh well, guess the guess it's time to find a real job. That was literally my thought. I know, right? I think like for me, it's more like I think like uh, up to that point, I haven't tapped. So like when I read that, it's like kind of like tap the Jenga tower for me. <laughs> like goddamn, I was like, I have like this uncontrollable anger that I <laughs> kind of express a little bit too much. I think so. Sorry if you guys misunder. Uh, if you guys were at the brunt of that, uh, <laughs> since it's on Twitter, I can't. It's it's on. There's a digital. What what was it? There's a digital signature for that, so I can't really escape. I need to um, control myself better next time. Make sure that I am calm. I am so calm. I'm so sad right now. Are you? <laughs> I'm also very sad. Yeah. Enoch is thinking about moving to Pokemon. Oh. And then uh, I'm thinking about the same because, like, as mm-hmm. I repeated. A lot of times that I'm trying to get an ogre pawn deck, so, mm. <laughs> so like it's just a matter of when, but mm. not a matter of, you know, Mm-mm. why. <laughs> so, so Mm-mm. yeah, I think that's that's gonna be what the both of us will focus on first. Um, Mm-mm. so like it's it's very funny because like now the ranking of TCG instead in terms of priority in my mind is uh Mm-mm. probably right now is like Pokemon first, Mm-mm. and then. Japanese Battle Spirits, Mm-mm. and then Wise Swords, and then Grand Archive, Mm-mm. and then Death Saga. <laughs> well, to be fair for me, it's like uh, some the part of me about that also asked like, why do I feel so angry? Was because like, I think for the most part, I still play care more about like the Japanese Battle Spirits. Mm, and then yeah, like, same. Oh, yeah, it's like, like why am I so angry for a game that I don't give my everything to? It's not like, it's not like in 2015 where I all I have is Vanguard. So it's like, when Vanguard uh, rebooted, it was like my heart just dropped. I was like, oh no, I can't, I can't do this anymore. So yeah, that's why. Yes. Yeah, that's so that's why for me like the V series and the D series. Playing once or twice is fun, but it's never going to be the same as with the uh, original Vanguard. I put too, way too much emotion into that. Uh. Yeah, I understand. It's like, it's also, for me, just the thing is of like I've said it to the others before, and mm-hmm. like I think I've said it to you as well. But um, if Saga is only goes back to the mm-hmm. casual online local level for me. Mm-hmm. Which is going to be exactly the same with how I'm playing the Japanese Battle Spirits now. Mm-hmm. Then I might as well just move back to the Japanese game because the cards are cheaper and yeah, there are a lot more options on what to play. Like yeah. right now, the only like the main reason why we just keep on playing Saga is because I like the boys. Mm-mm. I like the UK boys. Yeah. So it's like so like, it's just like it's just like the way of like trying to. I guess you can say keep in contact with them. Mm-mm. It's like I mean I'm, I mean I'm not pessimistic enough to think that like oh we don't have any more topics besides saga. But like you gotta admit, that, like that's that is the main reason why people are gathering right now. Mm-mm. So I'll probably just keep playing the game just to talk to them, you know. Yeah, true. I mean, like I'm also the same. Like I think like if I ever quit saga, it's not going to be. Because of there's no more money, but it's going to be like yeah, nobody else is playing, especially since yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, true, yeah, yeah. I think it's the same for us, but I, I think I've mentioned also before that the part where uh, yeah, the part that uh, of saga that made me the happiest to play it is not like the gameplay or the cash price, but it's the fact that uh for the first time in three years, uh for me in Germany. I can finally go to the store with a purpose. 
meet people and then like talk about the same game which i was able to do that briefly with vanguard but it's like and then like uh just lost contact with them and then like oh do i really want to play vanguard probably probably not as much i do like in the past but like yeah so that's why i kind of drifted away from the vanguard community i tried to hold myself back from like touching vanguard because i know that yeah i will probably be sucked too deep into vanguard if i <laughs> got into 10 meters <laughs> from vanguard <laughs> Uh, but yeah so that's uh but yeah with saga it's kind of like drifting away uh like now even the local that has been like really cooperative like trying to bring uh the mosaka players together like they are also giving up and then with that the community the last community that we have in my state also kind of like got disbanded just like the moment they say that oh yeah sorry we are not doing any more tournaments and my friend just yeah sorry then uh if there's no tournament it's kind of, there's kind of no point for us to kind of like uh play anymore so yeah uh, we are sorry but we will not be making any more purchases and then it's like yeah now <laughs> i kind of no reasons uh to play saga rather than to kind of like go to the grand tour and play with you guys so it's like which will also be pretty hard for the coming months since i am still jobless but yeah still uh up until uh until i can find myself to go out again then it will be quite hard but there yeah. i said i still have some friends visiting from abroad so that's still fine hopefully the next one is in germany though Mm. Yeah. If the next one is in Germany, I'll just I'll just uh I'll just do a day trip. If like let's say it's uh, in Berlin, the tram is at 11, then I'll just leave my home at uh 2 a.m. and then I will take the 9 hour train and then I'll, I will Oh wait. <laughs> my my calculation is off. So I'll leave yeah. my home <laughs> at 12 uh, a.m. and then I'll uh, reach Berlin by 8. I'll drink all the coffee I, that I can, then I'll try to survive, and then if I got into day two, then fuck. <laughs> that's uh, that's actually that's actually not in the plan. <laughs> But if I got into day two, then I guess I'll I'll sleep in in front of the venue. Then, <laughs> uh, my goodness. Yeah. 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 Hopefully. Uh, they will replace the Hanover, the Hanover one that they cancelled like last year. But yeah, I think like yeah, for for the most part, I think like the good thing is I think most of the people in our circle, if you may, <laughs> like they most left calm down and okay. So like those who wants to stay in Saga, they have resolved themselves. Okay, so I'll keep playing, and then. Which is which is very warm warming thing to warming thing to see because they are they are the people who motivated us to keep on playing. Again, my, our main motivation is to meet them. So yeah, if they keep on playing, then we'll keep on playing. Sometimes when you're an adult, you only need to cling to that sliver of reasons just to keep on doing something. But yeah, it is what it is. Uh. What else? But yeah, uh, actually, like the these people kind of warms my heart too much that uh, I was I was trying to work on a video where I rented about this like on my own, not with Ayu, and then like, goddamn it, you guys, you guys are making me calm. I need to be angry for this video, goddamn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, having a little bit of too much jet lag to be angry at this point. <laughs> mm, yeah, true. Uh, you're, yeah, you're. You just came back from America. 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 America, but not the freedom one, the colder one. Yeah, the colder one. The cold. <laughs> the colder America. 
<laughs> it, it, we, I call it the Arctic America. <laughs> <laughs> there's an Arctic American and there's the Arctic America. <laughs> Bruh. And speaking of uh, Cold Heart Judgment, have you seen the have you seen the Fatal Judgment? Oh uh, yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> They're hot. <laughs> Oh yes! No, I'm just kidding. Who would have thought? Who would have thought the Oracle number twenty one? The judge? Eh, no, judgment is which number is judgment again? I think it's seven or eight. Twenty one is the world. God damn it! I can't remember. I can't remember. But anyway, judgment was a man like a burning mannequin. So it is hot. Like uh, one of my friend was like when I said like fatal judgment is hot, and then like they said like. Judgment has been it's hot from the beginning. Hot. <laughs> judgment has been hot from the beginning. I don't mean literally got that wet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For those who got confused with the sudden change of topic, uh-uh. we're talking about uh, just like a new card in the Japanese Battle yeah. Spirits. Uh, it's, uh, no, it's actually 20. The Judgment. Ah, okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's pretty. Ah, oh, yeah. No, no. So 7 is just, like 7 or 8 is just this. <laughs> the one that I remembered. Seven is justice, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, I just, I just like it. That, you, uh... you, you, just, you, you just call clients like, oh, then my, uh, then my network broke again. <laughs> it's always like that, isn't it? The British network, the British network that we all like. The British network. I mean, I could, I could be, I could be using Enox network, but uh, I, for some reason, my device is undetecting it, and it's out for work. So oh, nice. I'm using my data right now. <laughs> what the, what the perfect Wi-Fi? But yeah, I think like yeah. the, the, the judgment. Fucking virgin media. I'll make them unvirgin. Yeah. Wait, what? There. <laughs> you need to need. Because the network is called virgin media. Mm-mm. So but... basically, fuck them. Yeah. So they become unvirgin. Oh my god, that's <laughs> now 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 that you mentioned that because I just made that video on battle battle spirit puns, <laughs> and then I was like, huh, how do I describe puns? And then I search in uh Irasto, yeah, <laughs> and then I was like, uh, I was like looking up for the jare, which is like the Japanese word for pun, and then it shows nothing, and then I was like, huh, pun, and I just put bread in. <laughs> Whenever I say pun, I just uh, I just show on bread. Bread, bread, because bread is pun. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm disappointed in myself. Nanti, <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I couldn't concentrate. I was like trying to say like the judgment, like after they left the Oracle, they became hot. <laughs> and then like, uh, just realized that uh, that's like the judgments effect is mostly for a bit stick, right? Because mm. like, God knows when you will be able to get eight cores to get it to level three. And then, <laughs> then it can become like a, Symbol at least, hopefully. And then I was like, huh, like why, why wasn't it uh three symbols from the beginning, right? Like, so, like give it like the origin, like the red origin dragon, the Amat, the new Amatrasu that came out before Amatrasu dragon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then I just realized that uh, since it yes, is, yes, like, it's so funny how, like, hmm. oh, yeah. It's so funny how it's casually you can just get to free symbols now. No, right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's why, like, the judgment felt kind of like, oh, this is, this is not bad, but it doesn't feel special. <laughs> this is our final extra for the set, goddammit. Right there. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how much it will actually contribute to the judgment deck. Mm-mm. I suppose um, you can play like one copy in there. We don't even put two copies to be fair. Because I think by the point you can send you can send her out. You don't even need the three symbols to be fair. Mm-mm. Yeah, I think people are say, like the thing that people are thinking is like basically using the judgment magic. So not really 
not really to specifically get the fatal judgment out but like with the magic since you can kind of like bring out any judgment that you that is in your top deck if you if you if you want damage then you can you can have the judgment as a or as an option basically yeah but like you know that's one that's one less slot for another judgment card like it could have been something else and mm. like it would be so much better to summon it out with the magic than Mm-mm. fatal judgment True. No, I mean, it's I... literally like, like, cause, like, if you just summon it up with the magic, it's literally just a vanilla double symbol. That is twenty nine k. If you can bring it to level, if you, no, no, that's the thing. You're not gonna bring it to level three. You're gonna mm-hmm. use the cause for something else. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> I just realized that it needs like eight cores to get to level three. It's like, huh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, this this totally like it's just a final boss card. It's always like the, uh, yeah, I guess. Like the final boss card is always like really heavy, right? Like they have, they need like twenty cores to survive, and then like huh, <laughs> all they, they can do is a, it's a triple symbol, right? And then like the, and then the main character will just casually attack, target attack, and then before before the battle ends, I will shoot the damage to you, and then the last boss just died. I see. <laughs> So that's what happened. <laughs> kind of like the one where uh, Yukimura uses the Burning Soul Dragon to target attack God Sex Type DN. And then it got. <laughs> and then uh, God Sex just casually shot him with an arrow from the back. <laughs> that was. Uh, that was the first time that. Uh, target attack actually backfires. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, but like that was for a bigger plan. Yeah. So Yukimura always does. As always. <laughs> <laughs> he could have just attack with everything and then like uh okay, no, I have to bring my soul dragon to level four, guys. That's important for the plot. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, this is, you need ten cores. Mm-hmm. I don't fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give the ten. Cores. I can't lose any of my spirits. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he said that he don't want to lose his spirits, but he's like he's playing in front, so it's like, huh. <laughs> So you're sending all your spirits to that to their demise, and then you say that you don't want to lose anyone. <laughs> That's an interesting way of thinking, uh, which I actually did, by the way. <laughs> you know, like the with the Panton with the Panton Premium box. I was like thinking on how can I uh draw like basically like, uh just change my hand even not really drawing too much. So I use the butler, the butler pantheon, which lets you draw one card when your pantheon is destroyed, and then yeah. I use the <laughs> I use the sick Yamato pantheon, which gives all your pantheon uh the ability to target an opposing spirit to attack, mm-hmm. and then I just pray to God that my opponent will summon something that is big enough for my whole spell to kill themselves. <laughs> mm. So yeah, basically. <laughs> Uh, basically, I just summon a bunch of the chip pantons and then I just crash them into <laughs> into that one spirit, and then replace my hand with uh, hopefully throwing the either the cosmic star panton or basically like the late stage pantons. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah! I always did that with my pantons. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness! So pantons, <laughs> all pan- That's that's what so apparently that's what panton players do. Sending their pantons to their demise. Uh, marching. <laughs> Marching so that you can replace them uh, with stronger pantons. <laughs> it's almost as if like it's soldiers in real life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. <laughs> mm, I wonder if only, if only, though, if only <laughs> it's easier to replace people, but yeah. My goodness. Uh, oh yeah, and 
speaking of my ESP of sending people to their demise, are you? I think yes. Uh, since in June we're going to get the ten diva set. Do you know how it uh it is definitely sending my world to demise? Because I've been what is been looking at the. I've been looking at the Laura, uh, the Laura Bakeran, the secret what the the secret one. At the, at the what? Uh, Laura Bakeran. <laughs> Throw Laura Bakeran. Oh, Laura Bakeran. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, your favorite girl, <laughs> one of your favorite girls. Hmm. So yeah. <laughs> But goddamn, man, she her like her glow up is just too real, man. It's like oh, can't get her out of my head. That's. Basically, like uh, when Luna, when Luna Vandil was revamped in the last uh, Diva set, yeah, it was that level of, it was that level of, oh, she looks so different and, got them, <laughs> got them, she's so pretty. The <laughs> thing uh, of pretty, like, don't know what happened, but like after uh, Laura. Like for some reason, like when they reveal like the next uh two divas, basically Spinia and uh Fonina. Mm-hmm. Oh yes! Oh yes! Yeah. Fonina. <laughs> yeah, they are they are pretty too. But like I think the like after looking at Laura and uh the previous, so previously we have uh Saraswati and also uh, Gayatri Fox. And like comparing yeah. to the first three, like the these two kind of like feels simple. Although like their dress are not less simple than the others, but I think it's mostly come from the contrast. I think because like these two, uh, Spinia and Fonina. So for for one, like for Fonina, her she is blonde and she has a yellow dress, and Spinia has blue hair and she has blue dress. Hmm. So I like, guess very pretty still, but like oh, <laughs> don't I don't feel like us watch uh simulation, special simulation because there's no contrast. Don't know if that's even a thing, but yeah. The Laura still the Laura though. <laughs> yeah, Laura, lo- lo- like you gotta admit, like the clothes that they gave her is like, it's like extraordinary. Yeah. Like the flowers and the the flower patterns, the contrast between the purple and the black, and then like oh, <laughs> yeah, it's extraordinary. As you have said, I I I am basically lost at loss for words now. I just hope that she, <laughs> I just hope that she wouldn't suck. <laughs> It was like yeah yeah. It was like with Luna, right? Like I was like. When Luna was introduced in the last, uh, in the in the last uh diva booster, it's like, oh my god, she is perfect. And then like, uh, wait, which one? Even... Which one is Luna again? Uh, Luna remember. is the Luna is the four like the four demon lord. So the the bug one. <laughs> the, the the what one? The insect demon lord. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, right, 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 Yeah, so just she's... like, just like, just like Ina. Yeah, Ina. <laughs> Ina, Ina, Ina. Ina, Ina, Ina. Luna found you, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's Ilma. And then uh, there's... Flama? Ma- Ma- Magnolilia Miser. Oh, yeah, Magnolilia. Yeah, Magnolilia is also... And then, yeah. And then, and then a Flama Flam- Flam- Sandria. Sandria there. Ah, yeah. uh, great, yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Kind It's of... been a while, even even though I was the one who named them. <laughs> <laughs> and then they change, and then they change everything, and then your kingdom just crumbled. 
bro. Yeah, they, they, uh, they, they don't really change anything. But like, uh, previously we only have like the katakana spelling, right? And then like, they really in the last Diva booster they released this thing called like the Bromide cards, which has yeah. the name of the Diva in Latin, in alphabet. Yeah. So yeah, now, <laughs> now all of the all of our the all of the names that we have in our head since like. The one that threw me off was uh, Sackler, because for the longest, oh yeah, yeah, the longest time I think like uh, I think you guys called her Sackler, Sackler, so S A C L A I R. Yeah. And then I refer to her as Sackler, so S E Y C L A I R E. Uh huh. So I just wanted to, yeah, I just because I think like the Claire is like the one that I that is most familiar in my head. So I just made, made it that way, and then like I think like in the end it's like say Claire, so it's like S A Y C L A Y R. So it's the it's a curse, <laughs> it's a curse cross between my translation and Ayumu's translation. Yeah. So like so like we 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 followed some of them Mm-mm. like Noah we decided to remove the H uh, and then uh and then uh but then like you know like recently we got a layover oh yeah that layover. one that one is actually hideous though <laughs> yeah because like and 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 then and then, like, and then my editor ping me is like you sure you want to change that and I said nah let yeah. let's give it to Ray <laughs> <laughs> I know that right? it's like Ray is like because like she was like so like synonymous with like Japanese culture especially since her default clothing uh, her first uh, stage outfit it was all basically themed after like the Japanese Miko outfits and then like huh, suddenly they made her name sound so English so that it, yeah it's become slay lay over so it's which is basically if you put if you open like any sites that uh sells battle spirits and then you put you translate them with uh google translate it's probably the reading that they will give you <laughs> my goodness <laughs> who did that <laughs> it's deep Alice, isn't it wow yeah, well, Banda has always been a horrible in English, so... Yeah. And then I... Turns out I made a mistake about my... One of my most favorite diva. So it turns out... Say Claire uh, was not... Was not... Uh, was not what I was thinking. It was what Banda had said. S-E-Y-C-L-A-I-R-E. Say Claire. My goodness. They had a lot... Of... Mm. The four demon lord is, yeah, the the four witches, <laughs> yeah, the one from the last diva booster was actually really well done. <laughs> yeah, it was uh like this metallic bromides doesn't really do anything in the game, and I still collected them anyway. But like turns out like oh uh, yeah, I can't yeah. really ask. <laughs> But yeah, I think like even like the one for Noah actually like goes way too expensive than it should be. <laughs> like I think it's the uh, the act like the bromide for Noah is actually way more expensive than the actual Noah <laughs> for that set by the really uh, yeah. I think it goes for two thousand yen right now, which the okay. original master rare version of uh Noah doesn't go that far. Uh. My goodness! Oh wait, is she is she a master or she is is she an extra? I forgot or I already is forgot. It, uh, it, it may be monochrome. She's an extra. Mm-mm. Ah. So let's see. Uh, where is the BSC? This is CB 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 BSC forty. Forty. Yeah, forty. Okay. So let's see the. Secret version for uh, Monochrome Fantasia Noah Floor is 8,500 yen, as it should be. And then we go down, we scroll down, there's the extra version of uh, Monochrome Fantasia uh, Noah Floor is at 280 yen. And then if we scroll further down, there's the 
metallic bromide for a uh, Noa Fleur, which is currently priced at. It is sold out and they don't have any price. <laughs> okay. I'll look for it in another site for Scott Hammond. I think, like, I base it on cardboard collectible since they never uh, deleted the price. And I think it's around 20 bucks in Singaporean dollar. How do you write Noah Fleur? Noah Fleur. Noah. Yeah, no. Noah Fleur. Hmm. Okay, so go to Google uh, products, then I uh, will have to. Sk- <laughs> is there any? Is there any shop that has them? Full ahead. Uh, full ahead and U U T. My goodness, why am I? Why am I? Uh, making this much effort just to. Proof a non point. <laughs> uh, you take battle spirits, which reminds me like I, I just just bought like one of the magazine promo, the one for the defined contract, because like randomly like my uh an acquaintance that uh is playing Yu Gi Oh, he was buying like the chum magazine so that he can, I think he wants the Yu Gi Oh promo. And then I just, and then he was, of course he was selling the rest. So I was like, yeah, why not? Uh, I'll, I'll just take it. And then he just priced me like, okay. yeah, he just priced me like according to the UUT price, basically. Ooh, extra. Ah, yes, yeah, so it's supposed to be extra. So PSC 40 monochrome fantasia. Shirokuro Genso. It's not. I think there should be a more elegant way to read that rather than Shirokuro Genso. Shirokuro Genso made, made it sound very like voice words. <laughs> well, it's uh, in Yu Yu Te is a uh, thousand and eight, eight nineteen hundred and eighty yen. So it's uh, two thousand yen for the Rio, so for the Noah floor one. Then the next most expensive is Diana Floor at the same price. Uh, and then we have Irma and Jan at uh, 980. Oh, uh, why, why do I forget their name? Rias is at uh, 1500. And then Sandy is at 800. So you can kind of see like how popular these girls are. Oh no, actually like Fonny is at 1300. So she's the next <laughs> kind of, it is kind of like the kind of, kind of goes like the popularity ranking, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, mean quite Fonny, uh, like it's no surprise that she's very popular. Mm-mm. So sorry, like I gotta admit, I was distracted right now because like just now, I mean, because I was scrolling facebook and saw this commercial for seven now it's like what the fuck <laughs> my goodness oh, are you <laughs> what are you like literally thirsty and you need some drinks that's why i'm drinking water right now no no so uh-huh. but i basically so it's the gist is that oof, oh draw my phone oh. uh <laughs> The gist is that like there was this guy who bought seven out and mm-hmm. then like he was like drinking on the street and then, like there was this other guy who just ran past him and stole the seven up and then uh and then because they were running it causes the the bus on the road to stop and when it stops like two like a couple on on the on the bus fell in love with each other and then they got married and then and then the girl called like her ex boyfriend or something like that and it's like uh sorry i'm married to someone else now don't, mm. i don't want you anymore and mm. like the ex-boyfriend tried to jump off a building to commit suicide and then like but instead he fell onto a thief who was about to rob a store <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 then the and then the video and then like the video of like someone falling and fell on someone else um but put it onto the internet and then like there was this another guy on the bed with his girl but like he was he, he was only scrolling 
Uh-huh. It was only scrolling the internet, and then like the girl got angry and left the house, and then like the girl was crying on the street, uh-huh. and then and 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 then like there were there were two two other girls in their own house seeing this girl crying, and then like one of them asked the other girl to call her boyfriend because her boyfriend is a police. But then like uh-huh. what what actually happened is that like, her boyfriend is it, it, with the other police force trying trying to confront an alien, uh-huh. and then but because <laughs> but because like the girlfriend called called the boy. Like the phone rang, and then like they they got surprised, and they they shot the alien, and the alien was like four with friends, four with friends, and then just like exploded mm. the earth, and then and then and then there were two astronauts on the moon, just like looking at back to the earth, and it's like oh my god, we have no place to go now, and then one of those like don't worry, I got this time machine, and then like he just sent himself back in time and mm-hmm. tried to stop everything, and that yeah. and that went back to trying to stop the person from buying the Seven Up bottle, <laughs> <laughs> and then and, and, but then like but then like because of that he was regarded as like uh, having a men has to have a mental disability, and so he got sent. So he got sent to the asylum, and then like three years later, he got released, and he became homeless and slept on the and slept on the street, uh-huh. and then uh, and then at the same time, the same guy was bought a Seven Up and was drinking on the street, and he was like, "I need water," and then he just ran past the guy and stole the Seven Up. No, it went full circle. <laughs> That's just like, what the fuck is this genius commercial? <laughs> This is how Steins get like one shit got that wet. Uh, oh my god. That, that roller coaster toy. I, <laughs> my goodness, like I can't. <laughs> that is some animation right there. And, uh, and speaking of anime, I'm really happy. I'm really happy this season, Ayumu. I. Cause my favorite anime, Eurocam, is finally getting their third season. Yay! Yay! Ah, uh, yeah. I was watching Eurocam with like the Anime Society, but mm. then like, uh, but then like, uh, I I don't know. Again, slice of life is just not my thing, mm. and uh, and then um, uh, they stopped watching, so I stopped watching. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think like are you uh Eurocam is not an anime that you watch. It it's an anime that you feel. No, you are completely right. Uh, and 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 at the current moment, I want to feel like smashing someone. Is well, what the, what did I say that? I mean, I feel yeah. like punching someone in the face I instead see. of a uh, hot chocolate by the riverside. So, uh, <laughs> so that's why. So that's why you are <laughs> watching Marshall. <laughs> uh, no, Marshall. Uh, I don't mind Marshall. Yeah. I don't know. I what am I what am I watching recently? Go ahead. Yeah. What are you saying? What yeah. are you going to say? Because like uh, I am sharing a Crunchyroll account with my nephew, right? And then uh, although they allow mm-hmm. like allow you to play like in multiple uh devices, unlike like uh, mm-hmm. other services like let's say Netflix or Amazon Prime, they don't really have like a separate profile for that. So I can kind of tell like what my nephew is uh, my nephew is watching. <laughs> and why is he watching <laughs> yeah, you know you know you know what my uh if you if you listen this far uh why nephew uh just just know that your uncle uh your uncle is not uh angry i'm just disappointed <laughs> what is he watching <laughs> tell me no just kidding <laughs> the the one that i am kind of concerned about is classroom of the elites Uh, ah uh, yeah, I'm series. thinking about that as well. Mm. It's like the opening songs are so good, mm. and then like um I don't know the protagonist looks edgy as fuck. That I want to watch it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kind of remember there was some uh stuff that I think uh he's probably too young to watch. <laughs> but, like other than that, I think like oh I see. So yes. The the part that I think like uh, he is starting to get into his re- rebellious phase. That's why I'm a little bit worried. But I guess my <laughs> sister say that she will be like kind of uh, monitoring what he watch. So maybe I should not be too worried. But yeah, let's see. Because like other than that, he is like watching like the normal, like the normal middle school boy stuff like uh, Demon Slayer, Marshall, uh, 
I think like the the interesting thing is he started to watch Haikyuu but he didn't finish. Oh, okay. And, yeah. And then there's this one thing that I wanted to consult to you, Ayumu, since you watched the movie. And then, uh, so he's actually watching Bunny Girls and Points. <laughs> Uh, I haven't watched the movie yet. Uh, mm-hmm. I need to watch the movie. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think Bunny Girls well, and I should be safe, right? <laughs> I shouldn't. Uh, shouldn't be worried as the as an uncle, right? Yeah, to be fair, I think I think it's fine. It's not... Let's just say it this way: like, Mm-mm. it does have. Mm-mm. Some adult jokes in there. I mean, quite literally, you got mm. you literally got a girl wearing a bunny suit in the mm-hmm. library. Um, but uh, I think the anime overall is mm-hmm. going to be too sophisticated for your nephew to understand. Anyway, mm-hmm. true. I think he dropped it after like, episode one. Yeah, I think and you can try watching it, but like, it's not going to be something he understands. So like, even for me, now that you ask, mm-hmm. I think I had to rewatch it before the movie because there were fuck ton that I didn't understand. Mm-hmm. I was only like, oh, very cute stuff. Guy uh... likes the girl. And the other girls have a lot of supernatural problems. And hey, I feel like I've seen this somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then like you just think about Haruki. It's like, oh, oh. wait. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, 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 And then and and then yeah, stuff happened, and now they're boyfriend and girlfriend, and then yeah. the happy, happy, lovey dovey life. Oh no, his uh. sister's about to disappear. It's 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 just all bunch of random stuff while giving you philosophical lessons. So it's like. It's like you really need to concentrate to yeah. understand what's going on. I think uh, you can't use a TikTok brain for that, unfortunately. <laughs> um. Yeah, true. So that's, that's probably why <laughs> so he has TikTok brain. <laughs> so yeah. Uh-huh. Oh no! It does he actually use TikTok? I am not sure, but YouTube Shorts probably. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so so basically the same thing, and I and I'm making YouTube a lot of YouTube shorts now, so I'm part of the problem. He, he particularly <laughs> likes the one where he always mentions the first short that we made, like uh, for the uh, for the first step in a while, like the one where you tell the story where you uh volunteered in the kindergarten. He really likes that one. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, so the one Which where. One? You, Where you you remember like uh ten episodes ago I think you were yeah. telling a story about when you were volunteering in the kindergarten. All oh, right, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> volunteer, not volunteer. Fuck oh, my yeah, life, volunteer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, this is this is the problem of being <clears throat> fluent in English. Like sometimes. You got too comfortable and then how huh? <laughs> words just came out of my mouth. I don't know how it works, but it came yeah. out of my mouth. <laughs> uh... Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh my god, Date Alive Five just started today. Oh no, <laughs> they have Date Alive Five. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, we get into the good part. I still have to read the light novel, but uh, for my life, so much stuff to do. Uh, I know, right? Like, mm-hmm. I want to read Shana. I want to read Musoku Tensei. I want to read Bunny Girl Senpai. Mm-hmm. And I want to read Age of Lives. Like, fucking hell, man. And then, like, that, and then, like, got another friend just telling me, no, you can't just keep reading light novel. You're not going to learn anything from them if you mm-hmm. want to be a writer. It's like, okay, now I also have to read actual English and novels. Mm-hmm. Ah. And that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know, right? I mean, like, I have one that I already finished reading if you want. You can take it. <laughs> uh, which one? Now I have uh so I bought this uh English novel. It's called Artemis. I bought it because the cover said that it was written by the same guy who wrote The Martian. Okay. And I, and I really like the movie Martian, so it's like, oh, maybe it's going to be. No, it's not. It's not the same. <laughs> like, I... <laughs> Can you give like a synopsis? 
So basically, like the uh, for the Martian, uh, it's about ah uh, well for Artemis, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. No, no, I mean like just to just to kind of compare it, like the Martian is about the a scientist that got stranded and then he uses the science that he know to kind of like survive in Mars. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that is the Martian, but like Artemis, uh, it is about a world. <laughs> so she is basically like a. She's like us right now, so she's basically like a free spirit, kind of like a. She's kind of like someone who wants to work for her passion. So she is, uh, her education is uh in the trade of welding. Uh huh. Uh, but she don't want to be a welder like her father, so she, just do like odd jobs so that she can, hof- hopefully uh find like a business opportunity. Also, she's a smuggler, of uh, course. Uh, okay. <laughs> so basically, she smuggled stuff, and then like she got uh, in. So basically, the Artemis is the uh, the name of like a like the city that is on the moon that is run by a corporation. Okay. Yeah. So basically, she was smuggling stuff, and then like when she was smuggling those stuff, she got uh. How do you say? She got involved in like the conspiracy. Revolting Artemis, basically. Ah, oh, okay, I see. Yeah. <sighs> And then, well, yeah. I can always just take yeah, the book it's, it's, if you don't want a, it. But it's a it's a slow burner, so yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the books are slow burner, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's it is, but it is always like uh, feels like okay, it's a slow slow burner, and then you get to like the sixty percent, seventy percent point, and like whoa, whoa, this is too fast. Like why? Why is it <laughs> going so fast? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, as I as I talked to you, I was uh, I'm I'm currently reading a book still uh, around a hundred pages away Mm-mm. from ending it called uh, they both going to die at the mm. end. Oh yeah, <laughs> they both die at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it was a by a Canadian writer because mm. uh, you actually get spread. I bought it while I was in Canada, Mm-mm. and then uh, <laughs> and then like. But like basically, it's in a world where mm-hmm. like people would be notified that they would die in the next twenty four hours. Mm, okay. Yeah, and so it's just about two strangers who mm. decided to find what they call a last friend, like mm-hmm. someone to hang out with, mm-hmm. like uh, in the last twenty four hours before they die. Mm-hmm. And like it's it's really just about the two of them. Uh, I mean, as uh, what I've seen so far, anyway, it's about the two of them. Just like influencing each other in the very la- at the very last moment, Mm-mm. and then and then yeah, it's just it's like it's less of a story and more for like a food for thoughts kind of thing. Mm-mm. And uh, it's 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 the it's the kind of story that I like really yeah. Yeah, we need to do a book trade next time you come. <laughs> can I, yeah. I can invest in the in that book right now? Uh, I guess like I read a novel that is pretty similar. Uh, like not a novel. Uh, I read a comic, uh, manga that is like pretty similar to that in the past. But mm-hmm. uh, I forgot what the title of the manga is. But like basically to just to spoil, uh, the whole thing. Basically, they live in a world where you can basically sell your remaining lifespan. So and then you can kind of like set how many how much time you want to have left. So like I think the main character sells his last lifespan. Like so basically they can detect like how many lifespan he can get. Like for example, like let's say it's fifty years. So mm. you just uh started okay. I just won the next three months. So he just uh, he sold all his lifespan and all of his lifespan until like the next three months. And then he was like given lots of money. Like of uh, course, yeah. So I think like in the in that world, it wasn't something that is uh, taboo or anything because like lots of people are doing it. So like, if your family needs money, then yeah, you will probably sell it until like tomorrow just to say goodbye. So basically, yeah. Now, uh, but he is like he is like a free spirit, right? So he don't really have any family to give it to, or like at that point, like he was not really close to his family. Mm-hmm. So like he just want the money to kind of like yeah because like I I was just drifting anyway so let's just uh get the money and then like 
have some fun for the next three months and then it's done but like of course like uh, after two weeks of being able to do anything that he can do like he started to get bored and then like he started to wander around and then he meets a lot of people i think he ended up kind of like mended uh relationship with his family and then like he gave the, rem- the, his, the remainder of his money to his mom his mom or something Mm. I might remember this wrongly, but yeah, and then like he met this one girl, and then I think they will die pretty much at the same on the same day, and then basically nothing really developed romantically, but yeah, they kind of like develop a karma camarade camaraderie, and then like yeah, basically, yeah, I think it, it's pretty it's pretty in the end it's pretty similar. It's just in the end they all die, as we <laughs> as the as the no as the comic uh, has. Uh, promise. <laughs> yeah, I think I've seen this one before as well, which is mm-hmm. like, is that the one that you're talking about? Wonder. I don't think so because I don't remember the family part. But like, there was this other one that's like, this guy is going to die in one week or something like that, mm-hmm. and like he's always been alone. But like, uh, but like in this one week, there was someone else who would monitor him. In the background, mm. well, when you when you say in the background, it's literally just her sitting in the same room. But like, Mm-mm. you kind of you kind of just ignore her existence, Mm-mm. something like that. And then uh, but the, and then like just like over this one week, they kind of develop a relationship and stuff like that. Mm-mm. And then and then he died. <laughs> mm. I can't remember. It's it's like a one shot manga or something like that. But uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, I Can remember. Yeah, right I remember now. this yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, I think like there's a really there's a lot of concept, like that surprisingly, because like when I first search in uh Google, the the first the first uh result is this manga called uh, Mikaka no Kofuku, the, so three days of happiness. Oh yes, actually, I think it's that one. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's that one. Yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. the one that you are talking about. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I think that is the one. Yeah, three days of happiness here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ah, I see. So the that is the so Mika uh Mika kan Kofuku is the title of the novel, and then it got adapted to a manga, and then the manga was called uh what the everything is in kanji. Uh, jumio Jumio wo kaito te eh, kaito te morata ichi ne niski ichi man ende. <laughs> So I sold my life for ten thousand yen per year, basically. Oh no way! I don't think that's the one then. Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I think yeah, this is actually the one that I am familiar with. Yeah, yeah, no, I, don't, I think it, this is the one actually. Yeah, because like you didn't, you didn't mention Miyaki, so I thought it's a different one. But yeah. Mm-mm. Oh, so he is the okay. So he is depressed because like he knows that. Uh, The total value of the remainder of his life is only three hundred thousand yen, which is three thousand USD. Well, no, two thousand USD, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> still sad. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Actually, he uh, he has three months left to live. After heading home with the money, he is greeted by an expected visitor. Oh, so the one he met is not the person who was going to die, but like. The one who bought this lifespan. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I oh really? Yeah. Oh. Ah, so uh, right. That's why. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah, that's like, why it feels really bittersweet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't know from novel. Hmm. Oh, I need. I need to get that. I need it. <laughs> I need to read it. Uh, oh no. You will just gain another activity that he needs to do, <laughs> uh, which, <laughs> which reminds me, because like I recently like have a, like I have a Dutch friend, right? And then he was like inviting me to, to go, uh, to go bouldering, but it was like the same uh, day as as my church day, so I can oh, okay, so I can't go. And then guess what? <laughs> like this morning, I was like looking. Because I wanted, I needed to go to the hardware store to buy a lamp for the apartment. 
And then I found out that five mm. minutes away from the hardware store, which is like 15 minutes away from my place, there's the bouldering, like a bouldering gym. That's so, oh, it has been this close all this all this time. <laughs> But then I told my sister like, why why would you want to spend money on that? Well, when you have uh, something like this, <laughs> uh, so I'll probably bring you there next time. Uh, there's this. Uh, in like maybe one hour away <laughs> by walking, I uh, there's this kind of like mm, I don't know how to describe this. <laughs> It is called the Tar- Tiger and Turtle Magic Mountain. No, oh, sorry, what? The Tiger and Turtle Magic Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> the tiger turtle magic mountain yeah oh my god the article is in german uh in oh, no. Rahen, so tiger and turtle magic mountain is an art installation and landmark in duisburg germany <laughs> i i posted the i put the image on <laughs> i put the image on screen and i just realized that it is way to zoom in <laughs> that's it's one of the only thing that <laughs> yeah, we we have so little in our city that this is the one of the thing that is actually like a tourist attraction. Tartakarta and Tartal Magic Mountain is an art installation and landmark in Duisburg, Germany, wow. built in 2011. Wow, like making art just to generate the image. Yeah. It was designed by Ulrich Kent and Heike Mutter. Uh, it resembles a roller coaster, but it is a walkway with stairs. Its vertical loop continues the walkway and stairs, but it is unwalkable and is blocked off. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of. So scared. is hmm? is this what like what an art piece? Yeah, but you can walk on it. Okay. So it was supposed to be a walkable uh, roller coaster, but yeah, you can yeah, you can you can go into the looping part. <laughs> for, yeah. For well, I mean, I'm as, I suppose. I suppose if you're strong enough, you can actually do that. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, like if you don't block it off, kids will get kids will definitely try to attempt that. <laughs> like, have you have you seen like what the what the German teens uh, in this part of the in this part of Germany is uh, are doing in their free time? <laughs> they have way too many free time, even though they have uh, even though they have mobile phones. Even with smartphones, they still have too much free time. So it's like yeah. <laughs> Imagine what will happen if they can it it is not block off. Can they? Yeah, it's it's probably mm. the, the whole thing will probably be shut down now. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, but yeah, I've been trying to get ten thousand steps a day recently, so I'm walking a lot. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I'm just gonna do it in ourselves. You are doing me from last week. But I lost, I lost one kilogram thanks to that. So yeah, closer to that bitch. Oh body. nice, <laughs> closer to that bitch, bitch oh, nice. body man. I'm just kidding. I mean, and and uh, I'm still under, I'm still under 60 kilos. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so you're the other way around, right? <laughs> You need to get, you need to get some muscles inside. I I have muscles. It's, uh, yeah. It's it's uh. Well, I mean, I have moderate muscles, not like actually skinny. Mm-mm. You know. Yeah, I think we are both kind of bottom heavy. <laughs> you know, bottom because, heavy. Nah, but because like for me, because like I'm when I when I have any uh any inkling of wanting to. Do something related to working out. It's mostly going to be walking, mm-hmm. running. So it's All the right. my so the muscles that get uh more trained is the muscles on my legs basically. So Girl. my arms yeah. are really <laughs> my arms are really weak. It is durable, <laughs> it is durable, but it's really weak. Like I like the few months ago, we wanted to move like the old uh, washing machine. Mm. And I can't, I can't for a, I can't like lift it like at all. Bruh. 
Yeah. Wah, wow. I just realized how big I really am. God damn it. <laughs> I, I know that I I know that I am not physically strong, but like always like facing the facing the fact person is always like the the most painful part. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, but yeah, speaking of living up, uh, like healthily. Here's the sad part though. I just ate the last of my the last portion of my the roast turkey that I made last week, and it has been a pretty yeah. big part of my diet. No, not no. the chickens. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to make another mm. one. <laughs> there's no yeah. There's no discount for turkey though. I kind of have to do it with chicken now. I kind of have to do it with actual chicken now. I mean, I think actual chicken is better than turkey anyway. I don't like I don't like turkey. Oh yeah, it it is that like a flavorful cardboard. It, exactly yes. <laughs> But I think I wasn't really that much uh, repulsed as I thought I would be. Probably because I also consume some some of the like the lean pork, specifically, just like that. Mm. I mean, I don't hate turkey. I can yeah. eat it. I just don't prefer it if yeah. I have to. I think like also like the it's also because I ate them like quote unquote without anything. So just I just uh, I mean like I bake it with spices and everything. But like when I eat it, it's just the turkey. So I think mm. like uh, I think like how other people eat it is basically with sauce. So basically, the sauce kind of like compensates the turkey being a little bit dry. Mm. But sauce is a big, sauce is like the biggest mass of calories in it. <laughs> like with uh, with sauce, it's like really easy to kind of like overlook. Like, oh, this has sugar, <laughs> this has sugar and oil and all that uh goopy stuff that you wanted to avoid. <laughs> so yeah, I get it. Raw, <laughs> not raw, not raw, raw, but yeah, only the turkey and salad. And then like, uh, I try to cut my own salad, right? And then I just realized like how much, uh, how much of the like the salad packs, because I previously I just bought like the salad packs and then like ate them over like two or three days. Mm. And I was like, huh, if I wanted to make sure this is sustainable, maybe I should try to cut my own salad, uh, which yeah. cost me. Yeah, uh, because uh, but because I bought like most of the vegetable in bulk, it costed me like ten euro for everything, mm-hmm. which gave me like two kilograms of uh carrot, four mm-hmm. hundred uh, grams of uh chili, uh, the green chili, damn, and then two kilograms of uh onion, mm-hmm. and then two heads of lettuce, and nice. yeah. Uh, several other stuff that made everything goes to 10 euro but like the lettuce itself is like one euro i think oh uh, that's not too bad yeah and then i realized like how much like uh i basically for i think i made like for four portions of uh salad and i think it i uh i put in like one single onion and one single Uh, one single carrot, and then like the bowl is already full with, uh, with the, with the lettuce. So it's like, oh, <laughs> so like, oh, oh, so all this time the salad pack is just eighty percent lettuce and or a cabbage, and then it's like, oh, <laughs> I, yeah. I whenever to... they, whenever they say lettuce, whenever they say salad, it's literally just lettuce, Mm-mm. and then uh, they'll add some sour cream in it. Well, not sour cream. You get what I mean. And mm-hmm. it's like. Was sa- actually no. What do you call salad sauce? And it's mm. like yeah, Or that's dressing sa- it. Yeah, mm. salad dressing. Yeah, and it's like, here's the salad, which yeah. is literally just lettuce. It's like bruh. <laughs> oh, I got to add kind of unlock a core memory because like, <laughs> because like with salad with uh like if you go to like a German establishment, any German stores, and then you buy a salad, the price like goes up like really. <laughs> It shows up. It's like uh the market price for salad now. I think it's around six euro, which is egregious mm. because like uh, 
if you buy like if you even if you want the, all the <laughs> add-ins with like the chicken and everything it will probably cost you like three euro in the supermarket mm. like if you buy it from like a pizza pizza shop or something like the most basic salad without uh, with only like one dressing it's co- probably going to cost you like 6.5 or something but like i think at that time like i was like uh me and my sister was like buying like the grilled chicken and then we mm. yeah so and then we bought like yeah might as well like buy the salad uh bought the salad from the same guy right mm. and then like uh okay so and then like okay we wanted with uh, balsamic vinegar and then like huh just literally just gave us like a bowl of lettuce with balsamic vinegar <laughs> on it my god <laughs> I don't know what did I expect. It's like I kind of like expect yeah maybe some maybe some carrot maybe some onion. <laughs> no, it's just yeah, it's be, just like they'll be really they'll be really expensive. Like you want cheap if you want want cheap salad, it's like mm-hmm. lettuce, <laughs> <laughs> just a lettuce. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, yeah. What else? But yeah, I mean like it is kind of like a big kind of so yeah the first time i think like i eat salad regularly it feels yeah i don't know what is my bridge to salad i think the my bridge to salad is actually the you know the salad bar from pizza hut i don't know if you have that in hong kong like we have yeah yeah i had it before yeah yeah i think like that has been like I don't really particularly like vegetables, but it's always fun because like this is the first time that I can just I can take whatever I want. <laughs> that's that's it has been a challenge always, uh, and then we know like how and uh, the Chinese internet like how people like stacks everything like a chain, like a freaking Jenga tower because you can only take it once and you cannot refill. So yeah, <laughs> there there's that. You cannot refill. Yeah, in uh, at least in Indonesia we cannot refill. But there, bruh. Yeah, bruh. That's a, that's a fucking scam, man. I know, right? <laughs> and then now, and then if you convert it to like uh you uh pounds, it's probably going to be cost you like two pounds. But like it's two pounds and like uh twenty five Indonesia. That can basically buy you house. <laughs> well, that's a hyperbolic. Uh, that's a that's a hyperbole. But you get you get my point. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's a that's that's definitely a fucking scam, man. Yeah. Yeah, I think like yeah, pizza for us has been always uh has been kind of like a luxury food. It's something that even when I grew up and everything becomes way more accessible, I have more pay and then pizza become more uh well known. So the and then Domino's came in, so Pizza Hut got the competition and they have to kind of like make things cheaper. Mm-hmm. but even then it's still kind of like uh something that you buy if you have money <laughs> it is not like it is not like any other fast food that okay so if i'm not that poor and like the other fast food is kind of like on the level of if i'm not that poor and i'm hungry and it's the only option available then i'll buy it and i will not feel like i wasted money but like with pizza it's something that you buy like uh on a good day. <laughs> so like, yeah, and then like pizza is always something for sharing. So it's like the other culture shock that I actually got like when I move here is that so you buy a medium pizza. This is your whole meal. <laughs> it's like, huh, <laughs> that seems too much. And I try to eat it and then, oh, that made sense. <laughs> Uh, yeah i just and now although italian pizza is supposed to be better but i was so used to american pizza that i was like oh <laughs> kind of want some chewing my bread now and i'm li- i'm doing that while i'm living in germany where the bread is supposed to be superior to anything you can eat the bread but uh you can sandwich a shoe between uh, german bread and it will still taste better than any american sandwich <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah like american sandwiches are just oily man mm. 
Oh yeah, I still, I still, I am still bitter about that. Uh, Spy of American Sandwich. I'm still bitter with Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I actually never. Tr- I still haven't tried Dunkin' Donuts yet. Yeah, I think like I was bitter because I kind of expected that again. Like I think I was still this illusion that I, uh, with my expectation that everything in, uh, in the US will be big, and then when I was like, because I left for the airport like really early, right? Like because there's the that's the only flight that doesn't need to transit in the UK, so I needed to go earlier than everyone, and then I. Went to the airport and then I there's only done the uh, the only place where I can get for the specific Dunkin' Donuts. And I was like, oh, everything. I kind of wanted something savory, so I was like, uh, is there anything savory on the offer? And then there's this, uh, sausage pancake sandwich, basically. Then, and then the image was like it. Well, it is a no. It is the size of a normal sandwich. And then, so, so my expectation is that it would uh, be this, yeah, probably not too big, but the at least like McDonald's, uh, McDonald's cheeseburger level of big, right? And then, so, yeah, to my surprise, it's just one of those small pancakes folded in two, and then like half a half a burger, like a sausage patty. Mm. So yeah, I'm still a bit rebutted. It is way too small compared to my. I bought like a cold, like a large cold brew with it, right? And then it's like, oh, <laughs> I have a, I have a, I have a cup of coffee that is big enough that if someone is trying to steal something from someone and I throw that coffee on some on that on the thief's head. He will probably fall into coma, and I will probably get deported uh, because of the because like a because of his physical assault. Uh, and then I got and then I got a sandwich the size of my palm. Like what? The, like how is this? How is this fair? How is this yeah. all even? How does this work? No. Uh, yeah like uh i was in uh i was in boston just yes, yesterday and then uh <laughs> and then uh it feels weird to say that you were somewhere yesterday the way, it feels weird to say when you're like, on the other side of the earth yesterday but yeah mm-hmm. yesterday i was in boston and then I, I ordered this chicken wings which is like pretty expensive but mm-hmm. i guess walking is back from airport um mm-hmm. It's more expensive than what I get in Weatherspoons, mm-hmm. which is like a, a local pub in the in the UK. And like mm-hmm. it has it literally has le- less wings than the Weatherspoons. Like what the fuck is this? Dude. I thought I thought everything in America is plus size. <laughs> I know, right? And yeah, I think like the most portion that I get is actually uh the most portion of chicken wings that I got is actually when I uh when I took that flight back to Spain. And then there's this Spanish couple that basically bought too much chicken wing and then they just shared them with me. It's like uh that is the best chicken wing that I have ever had in the US. Probably my only ch- the only chicken wing that I had in the US, but still. <laughs> yeah. But I think I just I just sent you the photo, right? It's the uh, the disparity between my gigantic cup of coffee <laughs> against that small <laughs> pancake folded in half. Okay, it 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 ha- it has an X, so I guess I can kind of give it a pass. But it's like, oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, the, I know that anything bigger than that would probably be too heavy for breakfast. But still, <laughs> kind of yeah. I don't think we really pick up when we were. I think the closest the closest meal where we kind of pick up is the that ramen we have before, uh, on the last day. On the on the night of the world's final, <laughs> where I left to meet my friend. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. My God, I'm still bitter that we don't have any any display for Pal Spirit Saga. Like, I arguably we have, but it's like. One frame. <laughs> uh, my goodness. 
I wish we, I wish they would make like a, re, a small stand where they kind of like show uh, the card arts, probably like uh, the frames where it would, like the SBR frames from the set four, but like they do it from like set one to set four. That would have been pretty nice, I think. A what? So like, you know, like the, in the Bandai card game fest, like every card game has a boot, a uh, boot. <laughs> How do you put the B O O T H? Booth. Put, uh, yeah. Booth. Boots. <laughs> boots. No, there's there's no T S there. There's no T sound. Uh, boots. Stupid, I know. Yes, but yeah. Booth. Yeah. Booth. Booth. <laughs> sound German, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah, yeah. I think it's easier to say than katakan booth. <laughs> But yeah, it's really like I mean, like every single card game has a boot. Is 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 yeah yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's it's an F sound. Boof. Yeah. Boof. Ah, boof. There think. you go. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. it's easier to understand. Yeah. So yeah, the thing like Saga is the only game that doesn't have a boof, and the closest thing that uh, Saga has to an activity is a Saga tutorial that shares the same registration as the uh, Union Arena tutorial, which was flooded to shit. That I think like one uh, thing like some of our friends tried to join the tutorial and then they didn't get any of the half tech even because like they yeah. like, they literally like, ran out of uh, text to give out them. That is a pretty that is a pretty encouraging revival though. Given like when the game was introduced in Japan, it was really like cluster. But yeah. Uh, like uh you what which one you talking about union arena union arena yes yeah yeah i was like what the fuck is this shit man I know, right? <laughs> like again like if only they can make like a simple proof for uh saga it doesn't have re- it doesn't really have to be fancy right it has to be fancy actually i mean like it doesn't have to be like uh has like a something interactive to do or anything I think like the other like the one with One Piece and Digimon, it's mostly just showing off what the franchise actually has, right? And Saga mm. for what they have like they have like four sets of art to work with, so it's like, huh, you don't have that less of a material. You kind of also sell the game as a revival of the kind of like a revival, like a way to bring like the Japanese battle spirits to the West. So like you can kind of use that as well maybe like show photos from the previous world championships maybe that can kind of like help to kind of like show that okay so this game is actually has a crowd outside and we this is the thing that we wanted to also bring to the west but no no but no nothing nada so yeah anyway (laughs) moving on Moving on to the happier stuff. <laughs> why? Why? Why are we just look? We at this point we're just looking for reasons to be sad, aren't we? <laughs> we get a bit tired, aren't we? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now that you mention it, like was, uh, yeah, I think I have mentioned it before the podcast, but like. The slog, yes, I uh, recently I've been able to wake up a little bit earlier. So, and then mm-hmm. I tried to make it a habit that, uh, from nine, from around eight to, yeah, basically nine to five, kind of do some stuff to, yeah, kind of study, apply for jobs, or at least, at the very least, if I'm really bored, try to go out and basically walk more. So at least I can uh, fix my stamina problem. Nice. So it is it is interesting that uh, to find out that actually the sluggiest part was not doing this, but actually staying up between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Although that is supposed to be like my off time, so I can play games, I can read comics and everything, but it's like, I have to play games for the next five hours to do <laughs> now I kind of now I kind of understand why streaming is uh streaming playing games is a job 
if you have to do if you have to do it it is it is like it is a slog feels like uh okay i have to play games just to stay awake yeah but there yeah. <laughs> yeah i've been trying to sleep at the airport Mm-mm. nah it was hard that's mm-hmm. why i slept for 14 hours today ah <laughs> uh, yeah you, you earn it we you hold out well uh on your way to the uk so <laughs> and speaking of reward <laughs> Have you seen the? Have you seen the? That's not actually a reward, but that's the uh, the commemorative uh, product for the next uh, Belsper Championship. So the oh heat, yeah, the yeah, the heat display. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I want the. Um, I know, right? I don't. I don't really need the man. Uh, actually, I do, hmm. but uh, I want the sleeves more. Yeah, I know, right? I rarely say this about uh guys, but like yeah, this one, this one is actually beautiful though. Like the like say this is uh magic circle and everything, and then the color scheme. Just really like black on purple. <laughs> uh, and then the snake vision as well. I wonder if the snake vision will be, fall, probably going to be fall, isn't it? The uh, which one? Uh, the they gave you like so this set actually contains like one play mat one set of sleeves uh with 50 inside uh this is also this mini size if you are wondering if you are from saga and then three copies of uh snake vision which is one of the more used uh purple magic so yeah there you have it So you have three copies of uh, Snake Vision, by the way. I uh well well I think we have more versions than that, but yeah. And then uh, th- three copies, I mean, uh, in the in this oh, right. set they have three copies. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so I think that's why my one of my friend was selling his. Probably he ordered three because he didn't notice that you get three copies of Snake Vision. It's like oh, <laughs> I have bought a little bit too much, you know. <laughs> But yeah, now now I guess I guess we know why Hera didn't get Snake Vision. I was like, huh, <laughs> that was pretty random. <laughs> uh, I think Hera got like that attraction, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> that attraction is not something that I would uh that I would associate with the Ogre Wizard deck. But it's like, huh, I guess that works. So this is what. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and then I think Amamiya mentioned that it could have been like Shig- Shigigami of the Dead, which yeah, I think arguably maybe, or scapegoat can also work. Hmm. Oh yeah, scapegoat. Mm-hmm. Scapegoat would have worked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, it would have been better if they reprint scapegoat. Yeah. Yeah. Because like the card is a bit too old, isn't it? Hmm. We don't need that for Tarasi. Oh, fuck you, fuck yeah. you, No, right. At least give us, at least give us, uh, give us Kapalri slash, so we can have two version of Era. <laughs> nah, we, but if we have Kapalri slash, then the next, the second side will have been somehow they will have sa- they will have to somehow connect Hera and Sorius Arthur. Kind of wanted to see that though. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Mm-mm. Yeah, speaking of soldiers, Arthur, I've been. I find I I finally did that. I finally stream. I finally stream connect the battlers again. Yay! Yay! I tried to. Yeah, I kind of wanted to try speed running it. Uh, so basically trying to finish everything in one sitting, and hopefully as fast as possible. But I can't because. Of my uh mid range deck, mid range, <laughs> my because my ten years ten years old brain wanted to make big plays, so I don't think it's <laughs> even it if it I don't think it's even tactical, but I kind of just wanted to make the play as big as I can, so it always take a lot of in game time, and then some of the my decks are <laughs> really slow, I think like I even for 
got like uh saw like the one of the thing that I was uh I actually forgot is I put Vina and the sorcerer grants and the sorcerer mega grandson in the same deck. <laughs> And then so in that deck I have uh, Vina, Alex, and the Sorcerer Mega Grandson in the same deck. And then I deployed Vina, and then I deployed the Sorcerer Mega Grandson, and then I wanted to summon something. And then I was wondering why, why didn't Vina uh, reduce the cost of that card? <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> I know, right? Uh... And then, yeah, the only, I think the only thing that, the only deck that I cannot fix in the end is the, is the chariot deck, the white purple, like the white purple uh, Astro Blazer deck. Because that uh, Axel that re- uh, revives one uh, Astro Blazer from your trash, that one is from BS59, right? I haven't bought the what? DLC. So. <laughs> you know that in BS59, if I'm not wrong? Uh, so basically, the last set of the True Reaper Saga. There's this Axel that lets you summon one purple or white uh, Astro Blazer. Ah, oh, right, that yeah. one, yeah. Plus XLS. Yeah, that I kind I kind of wanted to put him in, and then I can't because I haven't bought the DLC. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> and I think the DLC is even. <laughs> The DLC is cut up to parts, so like it's not like you buy one DLC and then you get everything. So let me let me go to the eShop real quick. <laughs> yeah, I think uh Yeah, I think I think there are multiple DLCs on there. Mm-mm. Yeah, I think there is one for like uh so basically there is one for the superstar. Uh there is one for kind of like uh the parts to make your Egyptian deck complete. So it's even... Mm. It is basically only... Uh, it is basically only the Isis and Osiris. So let's see. So yeah. So there's a special pa- special set uh, one. Uh, which includes uh oh my goodness, is that it? <laughs> Wait, that can't be it, right? Special cardo set two. So I don't think this is the one. Where 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 is actual the DLC though? Boop boop boop. So yeah, PS fifty nine. It's twenty five hundred just for uh. Okay, but if you buy, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the, that's the useless package, isn't it? So if you buy the, if you buy this DLC, you get you basically get uh you unlock the pack and then you get one of every card, which is kind of unnecessary if you're in the late game. Oof, yeah. Oh no, I think oh what <laughs> the stupid part is uh the stupid part is actually if you buy that one, so it's twenty five hundred for uh basically accessing the booster pack plus uh getting one of everything. Mm-hmm. But if you want only access to the access to the booster pack, it's twenty two hundred yen. <laughs> Bro, indeed. And then the special card set, uh, I think. So it even did not unlock. Uh, it basically only support the deck that is included in uh PSC thirty six. So basically, Isis and Ra. So they give you. Oh wait, no. Okay. Artemis no Oh they give the Artemis temple. They have they give Grand Walker Artemis. Oh but they don't give the Artemis Godseeker. So mm-hmm. they give you the uh the Isis Godseeker. 
is a strength uh a star Bruh. they give you isis uh and then uh kotoshika Mm-mm. okay so past that uh capri sheer, sheer heart attack <laughs> sagmetum and then raw and then have five mm-hmm. temple which is a little bit random but i guess it's understandable it's a staple in blue anyway and then yeah. consoler uh and six and six fit guy for some reason so the <laughs> yeah surprisingly yeah, the whole know. switch the whole switch game is just fucking scam man i know right <laughs> and then the other one so this so this special set number two so the special set number one basically gives you access to the whole uh the whole uh superstar mega deck shamanic throw and grand walker apollon well grand walker apollon is in the mega deck so yeah there you have it <laughs> my goodness i think i'll have to i'll have to take that uh <laughs> chop us uh i'll have to uh, work in the supermarket so that i can <laughs> By the DLC now. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> But yeah, I think like surprisingly the deck that I can make is actually, uh, Dark Snake. <laughs> It's a little bit chang, but like turns out there's enough. Uh, there's enough to make a functioning deck. Thanks to Shen Mado being too broken, that card was released like how many years ago now? I think it's in 2016. Then sixteen, twenty seventeen. No, it's in twenty sixteen because I won in twenty sixteen, and it's already one set past Shen Madu. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's been eight years, and that, <gasps> and that guy is still scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Shen Madu's, it's gonna be like, it's like one of the cards that affect the whole family developments. Mm-mm. Alright. And then what else? Oh yeah, the other one is I kind of because like there's a the greatest re- because of the greatest record. Ah, uh, we have secret necro, right? And I kind of joke with the thought that ha, huh, maybe I can make like a purple aggro deck where you just put all the low cost spirits and then just ram everything and then like, uh. And then hopefully your opponent hits you, and then you open Alex, and then now you can uh, put Necro on top of her. Of course, it didn't. It didn't work. So uh, the I made the deck, and then I took tests. I always uh, fought against the NPC with the Green Primal, because of course uh, they corpus a lot. So they are and they, co- they corpus a lot, and they summon lots of the seeker kind of thing. It's like they always have like a lot of target to core shoot, so it's kind of I think it's kind of like a good test bed for like purple decks, just to test if the flow actually works again, like the good matchup. You know what? Mm. Uh, she goes first. She deploy a green world, and then my deck just stops. I have four cost zero in my hand. <laughs> I have four zero cost cards in my hand. <laughs> Ooh. If I summon the, all of them and attack, I would lose two of them, and I can't regain anything from that. <laughs> uh, my goodness, I think, <laughs> I think the zero cost rush doesn't really work without the some of the. What is that card? I think like there's a pretty old card that can jump out if your purple spirit is destroyed. Like those kind of cards. Yeah, without those kind of cards, it's kind of tough to <laughs> make it. And even then, against uh green and white that can casually just bounce your spirit to the bottom of the deck, it's probably going to be also tough because they are not destroyed. They are returned to the bottom of the deck. Great. <laughs> and then to add another layer. Since they require the spirits to be destroyed, 
unlike in saga, in battle of spirits, if your spirit becomes, uh, if the number of cards in your spirit becomes zero, it is not destroyed, but it goes to another state called being depleted. Which is not this oh, yeah. so this effects cannot proc <laughs> cannot proc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my god. Oh yeah, which reminds me. I think like we already l- <laughs> we already talk a lot about but that I kind of like uh have to suck way back into cards now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh yes. hmm. since we are already talking about purple, like you have you seen the notorious extra? <laughs> Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> yes, basically that's both philosophers, isn't it? Oh well, yeah. Yeah. The no- notorious extra. <laughs> notorious extra. <laughs> it's black instead of gold, guys. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's an improvement of a double extra. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty good. Though. It's like. Mm-mm. It's it's literally just Bandai Mm-mm. trying to add another rarity in there, but like it literally, it literally is no different to like normal X Ray. Yeah, I think it's a it it suffers from the usual double extra uh, treatment, isn't it? It's it is good in isolation, but it's like too generic. That's kind of a what what are you trying to do here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh-oh. No, right. It's basically like a test, test move plus, but instead of bringing you to finishing, I guess it's kind of like a control. Like, like even not really control, it's more like suppressing your opponent. Because after that, uh, if you can make it stay at level 2, then there's the purple uh, holy relics effect, which uh, when your opponent increases score uh, from the void, Then you can pull it to the spirit instead. So of course, it's a spirit. It has twelve thousand BP. In battle spirits, especially, he's as good as having one thousand BP. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. My goodness. Yeah, be yeah. We, we and then it's eight cost. So it's a uh, even against blue. It is a cost that will get hammered like. In three in three turns, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I'm like, there's more plus you cannot loop it. <laughs> oh my god, we we really need to, we really need to make one about as well for this. But yeah, I think like yeah, if only if only it is uh more focused on one thing, it's probably going to be better. But I think if you bring one, it... I guess they kind of mentioned that yeah, this the uh, this notorious extra will be the kind of cards that you want to bring one, uh one of in your deck. Yeah, no joke, man. Like if you, <laughs> why why would you want to bring more than one of this guy? <laughs> But then again, it's a me. Meisho is the Meisho is infernal lord. Yeah. So I guess it uh, kind of works with the ages. Maybe. Yeah. Kind of forgot. I already mm-hmm. forgot what Hades family is. <laughs> so let's check. I think I have still have the image uh, here, or did I have mm-hmm. I deleted that? Yeah, I have the I have the emperor spirit, the conclusor if you want, the conclusor spirit, mm-hmm. which is a yeah. issue. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess I guess it's a little bit better because they kind of like give it the family of the spirit, uh, of the team that is being supported. Mm-hmm. Like at least unlike the pre, I think it's if you compare it to like the double extras, it's better, because like the double extras, it's even way to uh to make it even. It's even more generic, and then to kind of make it not abuse uh, not abusable, they kind of give them a separate family that doesn't work with other families. So unless they are, uh, <laughs> unless they are borderline broken like uh, Lord Thunder, they <laughs> well they they will hardly see anything any place. I guess. I think like with the double extra in the la. 
in the True Rebirth Saga, so before they pulled the double extras for good. And they try to rectify that by starting to give them like an actual like an actual like the family that is actually relevant. Yeah, I kinda wanted mm. the angel one though. It's going to be for a dumb uh for a dumb fun deck, but I kinda wanted to I kinda wanted the angel. <laughs> 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 I know it's going to I know that uh, maybe from 10 times I'm going to use that deck I'm going to pull that at most once but still <laughs> mm. what does she do again battle spirits uh, BS 59 if I'm not wrong uh, 59 double extra uh The world savior Vina, so not, so not this one. Yeah, I think they pulled it from PS60, right? Or do we still have? Oh no, 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 no! They pulled it from PS64. So let's go to PS63, and then we should have. Yep. The six, the six absolute deity celestial of hope. Uh, okay, so you can send two cards. Uh, besides soul core, you can send two cards from the opposing field to their life. When you have done so, put two cards from the void to your life. Eh, yeah, put two cards from the void to your life. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, I just think it's funny. I forgot the utility though. <laughs> I forgot why I wanted to uh do it. Oh. I don't know. It's just the normal uh minus ten thousand BP destroy them when the BP becomes zero. Yeah, I I remember there's some kind of uh funny combo with this, or it's just I was just happy that uh, you can deplete something in yellow. I wonder which one is it. <laughs> Hmm. But she's pretty dull. Yeah, I, w- I wonder why I can't get her. I think at that time, uh, at that time, uh, she's only available. I was buying singles, and then someone finds something funny, and then like, yeah, it's just sold out. So yeah, mm-hmm. I wonder why. <laughs> But she's cute though. Probably that's probably why I wonder. <laughs> Let's face it. I I say this about funny combo, but it's just it's in the end it's just the looks, isn't it? Uh, Yeah. Oh yeah, and speak. Yeah. <laughs> uh. We just let's let's make a vinyl deck. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, "Huh, was this was this film in two thousand and uh with PSX is what uh, what year again?" PS sixty, PS six hundred and thirty. Uh, it's twenty twenty two. My God, that kind of gave me inspiration though. Now that I've tried every single cold cloud deck, I kind of, I was kind of thinking maybe I can make not really a deck profile, but kind of like a retrospective. Not th- now that uh, I think for the near future, the decks will not change that much. So I think I can kind of like reflect on why the deck was ever good. Like, what is the, uh, what is the actual like? How do you actually play the deck? And then like, whether it in the future it can maybe make a comeback. I think it's going to it's not going to be useful now, but it's probably going to serve as kind of like a time capsule on, huh? This deck existed.
mm. and it's going to be and it's going to be good because it's Vinyl and uh, Vinyl and Velma <laughs> and Vinyl. Yeah, which okay. Yeah, so I might not, I might not do the palm one just because that's palm, because it's disgusting. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> he's a bro. He's a bro. He's me for real, for real. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> yes. If you, mm. I hope that has been uh, a time where you guys can relax. Uh, Cool down with us now that Ayumu is trying to rest uh, from his long haul flight from the other side of the world. Uh, if you guys want us to talk about anything in particular, whether it is more about Saga or more about Pell Spirits, or you think that we probably should shut up about card games we don't know better and probably we should stick to foods, you guys can always send your questions, comments, uh, requests. To our email at therefirststeppodcast at gmail.com Or if you are listening to this on YouTube, feel free to comment below. So yeah, I guess that has been everything that we can share for this week. We hope that you have you guys have a nice week going forward. And we'll see you all in the next thing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.